In this video, we will be looking at longitudinal or sound waves calculations using the above formula. We'll be looking at how to work with an echo, which is a reflection of a sound wave. We'll do a few examples. Let's jump right in. First things first, you need to know this formula is given on your formula sheets. And you need to understand what each of these variables mean and the unit associated with those variables. So V, that is our speed of sound. It is our speed of sound. And it's measured in meters per second. Then we've got our frequency of our wave. And frequency, the unit for frequency, is hertz. And then we've got wavelength. And remember, wavelength is the distance between two consecutive points in phase on a wave. And we measure wavelength in meters. So we've got meters for wavelength, hertz for frequencies, and meters per second for sound. Now, how do I use this equation in an example? Here's a very basic example. So it says I play middle C on a piano. Middle C is a key on a piano, and they give me the frequency of middle C. They give me the speed of sound. And just by the way, this is more or less the speed of sound in air. And they want to know the wavelength of the sound that is produced when the key is played. So they're looking for that. So you always write your formula first. You substitute in. So in place of speed, I'm going to have 343. In place of frequency, I'm going to have 262 hertz. And then I'm looking for wavelength. Wavelength is my unknown. Then in order to solve for wavelength, I say 343 divided by 262. 1,309, so 1,301 meters is my wavelength. So you just take 343 divided by 262. I rounded off to two decimal places, but technically you could leave it to as many decimal places as you want. Okay, example two says two boys stand 500 meters apart. So we've got distance over here of 500 meters. And one of the boys bangs two pots together. So let's say this boy over here is producing the sound. And the other boy, from the moment he sees the boys banging the pots together, he hits um, a stopwatch and until he hears the sound. And they say that the time it took for him to hear the sound is 1.5 seconds. So the change in time, so zero when he saw the pot bang to when he heard the sound, 1.5 seconds. The distance that they're standing apart is 500 meters. Now, I'm going to call that delta x. You may not have learned about this yet, but change, this means change in position. This is basically a measurement of distance. It's actually a measurement of displacement, but for the sake of this question, we're going to take it as being distance. So the distance is 500 meters. You could have also written distance equals 500 meters. And they want to know what is the speed of sound in air. So we're looking for V. We're looking for speed. Now, we just spoke about this formula. In this case, however, this formula doesn't necessarily make sense because although we're looking for speed, so remember we said what is the speed of sound in air? So we're looking for speed. We don't know the frequency of the wave. We also don't know the wavelength of the wave. However, we do know that we can relate these three variables over here on the side speed, distance, and time with the speed distance time formula. And you should have learned about this last year in grade nine math, but it's DST, speed, distance, time. Distance is speed multiplied by time. Speed is distance divided by time. In physics this year, we're going to learn about it as looking like this. The speed is equal to the distance divided by time. In reality, this formula actually means velocity is equal to displacement over time, but it all means the same thing. This is basically your speed. This is basically your distance. And then obviously the bottom is your time. So if I have the distance as being 500 meters and my time as being 1,5 seconds, I can say 500 divided by 1,5 and I get a speed of 333 meters per second. Now, how did I know that my unit will be meters per second? Well, if you think about it, my unit for distance is in meters. My unit for time is in seconds. Meters divided by seconds 
meters divided by seconds is meters per second. You take the second to the top, the exponent becomes negative one meters per second, and then you're done. So just be aware, grade tens, that you can use this formula. Speed is equal to distance divided by time within the longitudinal waves and sine wave section. Let's do an example where there's an echo involved. Now, first of all, what is an echo? What is an echo? What does it mean? If I speak, and I, I know you've all heard of echoes before, if you're standing in an empty classroom, there's no desks, there's no, no carpet, and you make a sound, you will hear that sound bouncing back in your ear. So you hear yourself again. So the sound waves leaves your mouth, it bounces, it hits a wall, bounces, and it returns to you. So it reflects back to you. So an echo is a reflection of a sound wave. So in this example, we've got a ship's siren is sounded and the echo from a vertical cliff takes five seconds to return. Calculate the distance that the ship is from the cliff and they tell you the speed of sound in air. So I said you draw a picture first. It's not always necessary, but it may be helpful. So we've got a ship. Let's pretend that's my ship. The ship is on a water and here's the cliff. Okay, so this is the cliff. The ship's siren sounds a sound wave. Remember, it's going to travel in all directions. It's going to hit the cliff and then it's going to reflect back. So the sound wave takes time to go there. Assuming that the ship is not moving, it's going to take the exact amount of time to return. So see how I said it takes five seconds to return. If it takes five seconds to return, that means it took five seconds to go that way and back. So how long did the sound waves take? To travel in one direction. The sound waves took 2.5 seconds to travel in one direction and 2.5 seconds to travel back. That's important. We know the speed of sound in air, so V is 343 meters per second. That's great. That's the speed of sound in air. That's V. And they want the distance that the ship is from the cliff. Now, great tens. They don't want to know the distance that the echo traveled. So remember the echo goes from, here's my ship siren. The echo goes from the ship siren to the cliff and back again. So it travels there for a certain distance. It travels back for the same distance. I don't want to know how far the echo traveled in total. I want to know how far away is the ship siren from the cliff. So I care about the one way direction. So if that's the case, does it make sense that I use five seconds in my calculator? Sorry, I realized that my, my screen was a little bit too big there. So you may not have seen the five seconds. There we go. It takes five seconds. There it is. Five seconds. Do I care about the full five seconds? No, because the five seconds would be how long it took to go from here to here and back. But if I just want to work out the distance from here to here, I only need the time that it took to go from here to here, which was not five seconds. It was 2.5 seconds. So when I do the calculation, I'm going to use my time as 2.5 seconds. 2.5 seconds. I've got my time. I've got my speed. How do I work out my distance? Well, remember my formula. Let's erase this and write the formula is speed is equal to distance divided by time. So my speed is 343 meters per second. My distance is what I'm looking for. And my time is 2.5 seconds. So when I work that out, I get my distance. This is my one-way distance as being 857,5 meters. What that means is from the ship to the cliff, is 857.5 meters. Now you could say to me, but ma'am, what if I decided to use the full five seconds? Okay, cool. Let's see what happens if I use the full five seconds. So remember the full five seconds is the time that it took the sound to be released from the ship siren to the cliff and back again. That full time was five seconds. So if I decide to use the full time, I'm going to keep the speed the same, Time will be five seconds. What will I get then? I will get 1,715 meters, 
for grade 10s, it's very important to understand that that distance is the distance from the ship siren to the cliff and back because I'm using the full five seconds. And I don't want the distance there and back. I want the distance that the ship is from the cliff. So then I would have to take that distance, 1715, and divide it by two. And I would end up getting the exact same distance as I would have gotten if I just used 2.5 seconds. And that's your answer. So I hope that was helpful. I have past paper questions on this topic in the playlist below. For more wave, sound, and light videos, remember to check out the links in the description box. Goodbye, everybody.